NATO-Russia Founding Act, all of which enshrined commitments to equal security and, quote, not to strengthen their security at the expense of the security of other states, close quote. Those commitments were shattered when Presidents Clinton and George W. Bush extended NATO, including German and U.S. troops now on Russia's borders. George Kennan warned at the time uh, that expanding NATO to Russia's border uh, would trigger a new Cold War. Bush the Lesser compounded what became today's crisis when he promised NATO membership to Ukraine and Georgia. Fiona Hill uh, warned, uh, reminded us last week that she had warned uh, Bush, quote, that Putin would view steps to bring Ukraine and Georgia close to NATO. Uh, it was a provocative move that would most likely provoke a preemptive Russian military action, end quote. That action came in 2014 when Russia forces uh, seized Crimea, which had been Russia's warm water port and home to its Black Sea fleet since 1774. President Biden's and Secretary Blinken's arrogant insistence on the possible, fu on possible future Ukrainian and Georgian NATO membership compounds today's crisis. France and Germany have blocked uh, their joining the alliance. Were Biden to face reality, he could diffuse tensions by indicating support for a 15 year moratorium on new NATO memberships that could be extended. Despite the harsh public rhetoric in conjunction with uh, recent dip diplomatic encounters, some progress has been made. Uh, all size red lines have been clearly identified. And there is recognition that crisis solution will require reciprocity on a range of outstanding uh, issues. Ukraine's foreign minister says that a Russian invasion isn't imminent. And on Friday, Russia's foreign minister said, quote, there won't be a war as far as it depends on the Russian Federation. We don't want war. Former U.S. Ambassador James Matlock, uh, Matlock uh, calls for an obvious solution to the Ukraine crisis. Build on the Minsk II agreement. Negotiate creation of a neutral and federated Ukraine, similar to Austria and Finland. And like Swiss cantons and Biden's earlier advocacy of a federated Iraq, a federation will allow for linguistic, religious, cultural, and political autonomy and, European, uh, and Ukrainian stability, even democracy. The need for renewed arms control negotiations has also been recognized, beginning with the rival, revival of the INF Treaty and leading to major reductions in, in their nuclear arsenals. On the table are banning medium range missiles from the Urals to the Atlantic, uh, US first strike related missile defenses from uh, Europe, and US and Russian troops from former Soviet republics, along with uh, reducing military exercises on all sides. But incidents, accidents, and miscalculations can happen uh, with the danger of a deadly war, a deadly and escalated war. Amidst the European crisis, US and Chinese militaries are eyeball to eyeball in their military confrontations over Taiwan, the South China Sea, and the Senkaku Dayu Islands between Japan and China. Two US aircraft carriers and their warplanes are now engaged in provocative military exercises near Taiwan. Trump, Biden, and their mandarins, blinded by self-righteous uh, and manifest destiny worldviews, have forged a toxic national consensus. China, they believe, poses an existential threat to all freedom and democracy. Therefore, the US must aggressively oppose it militarily, diplomatically, technologically, and economically. This is about to be codified in Congress by the worst provisions of the US Innovation and Competition Act. Believing that, quote, China poses the greatest long-term challenge to the US, end quote, Congress increased the Pentagon's budget including money for the nuclear upgrade and acquisition of more warships, warplanes, space, and high-tech weaponry. Spending for the Pacific Defense Initiative increased by 300%. All this is ostensibly to keep the United States ahead of Beijing. Fear that adopting a no first use doctrine will invite Beijing to invade Taiwan means that the Biden's nuclear posture review will be very much like Trump's. Roots of today's US-China Cold War date to the 1890s when the US created its Imperial Navy. With that era's Great Depression, demands grew for access to foreign markets to keep US factories uh, running 24 uh, seven, thus to keep workers employed uh, with resulting social peace. US leaders thus sought uh, access to what they called the holy grail of capitalism, the China market. Coaling stations for merchant and warships were secured when the US conquered the Philippines, Guam, and Samoa, Samoa, and annexed Hawaii. 
Washington's 1900 uh, open door policy won access to China's so-called territorial concessions. An inconvenient truth is that in Asia and the Pacific, World War II was fought by competing empires. Japan lost, the British Empire collapsed, and the Pacific became an American lake. Uh, US Asia Pacific hegemony then went largely un unchallenged until China's recent rise. China had no role in negotiating the so-called and abused rules-based rules order. Not surprisingly, to serve its elite's perceptions of China's national interests, Beijing has thus sought to revise, if not overturn, uh, rules that it experiences as unfairly benefiting the G7. China's Belt and Road Initiative, its aggressive maritime actions, and its increasing area denial, uh, air and cyber capabilities are beginning to call Washington's dominance of the world's most economically vital region into question. Let me make a few last points. Trump and, and Biden's national defense strategies have prioritized planning for a possible great power war with China named as the primary strategic competitor. With Biden's emphasis on, on alliances, we now have the nuclear US Australian British AUKUS alliance. Uh, NATO's 2030 doctrine makes China containment one of the alliance's two priorities. And next month, the foreign ministers of the new US, Japan, Australia, and India uh, Quad Alliance uh, will again be meeting. And Biden has reaffirmed the US ironclad commitments to South Korea, Japan's Senkaku uh, Island came, claims, and military defense of Philippine maritime interests. Taiwan, which has a pro-independence government and which China calls a renegade province, is the world's most dangerous flashpoint. Biden and Blinken are playing with fire there by undermining the one China policy that underwrites the 40 year uh, peaceful status quo. This week, Vice President Harris met Taiwan's vice president. Blinken and Austin um, have trumpeted uh, Washington's rock solid commitment to Taiwan. And the uh, USICA legislation, which I mentioned before, will increase Taiwan's diplomatic standing uh, in Washington. Uh, Joe, add to this, there? getting there, Add to this, Biden has repeatedly dispatched warships and warplanes to the Taiwan Strait. Uh, all of this uh, undermines the One China policy. And in the South China Sea, I'll, I'll skip over a lot here. It's the South China Sea, uh, it's probably the most geostrategic important place in, in the 21st century. Uh, over it, you have 40% of the world's uh, 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 trade uh, moving, uh, including the uh, petroleum and fossil fuels that fuel the uh, Chinese, uh, Japanese, and uh, South Korean economies. Uh, were it to be cut off, you have the crash of those economies. And, and for this reason, uh, it's now uh, the jugular vein uh, of, of, of global capitalism uh, and of uh, uh, the dangers of war. Now, friends, all of this is madness. As we learned uh, from the 1982 Common Security Report, security cannot be achieved by spiraling arms races and confrontations. It can only be achieved with and not against the nation's rival uh, by creating mutual trust and pursuing mutually beneficial diplomatic outcomes. Our future does not lie in manifest destiny, US exceptionalism or militarism. It lies in common security approaches, common security diplomacy uh, to the world that can serve as the foundation for a nuclear free and environmentally stable world. Among other things, we need US and Chinese collaboration, Russian too, if we're going to reverse climate change. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. You put so much in that 